sorry for the problems, but for some weird reason, the, mic the microphone disappears. Now we have it on, so I'm not gonna play any intros or anything. <laughs> Got the microphones on, and we had the raffle here at Circle DC, and normally I never win anything. This time I won two games. Two games I actually won. Waterloo and Iron Curtain. Waterloo by, this is Worthington, a solitaire game. And um, Iron Curtain, not sure who makes this. It says Ultra Pro. They make sleeves, so they made a Cold War game. 13 days in 13 minutes. Interesting. It's a little, a little small game. You know, some cards there. And Waterloo here has. Says the woods, the, the wooden blocks there. Nice production, cards. One of those games that you move the wooden pieces to already pre-designated spaces on the map. I said it depends a lot about the cards. But today we're gonna be playing this game. This is the defense, the Assault on Cadiz 1625. Game designed by Daniel Hernandez Iniesta. And uh, this is a game that was given to all the attendees of Pax Ludica. That's a wargaming convention in Cadiz, Spain, held every year. This uh, was held this time in September, started September, I think, 29. And uh, so it doesn't have like a formal publisher. I know Daniel made a uh, print-on-demand campaign, which uh, finished about, uh, I don't know, in March. But this is a game that has, uh, it's really interesting. It's a solitaire game where you take control of the Spanish forces and you're trying to stop an Anglo-Dutch invasion. And it brings two maps, so you play at an operational level and you use this map, which is the Bay of Cadiz map. This map has, you can see here, has the city of Cadiz, and then it has these four forts that protect the city. And those forts can fire into these sea zones that you see here, they have letters. So they can fire at the Anglo-Dutch fleets, and it's three fleets of varying strengths, but at the beginning of the game, we don't know which fleet is which. We don't know what strength it is. We have to detect the fleets. So before the fleets even enter this map, we have to detect the fleets, and the fleets will be advancing or approaching Cadiz. And if we detect the fleets, we'll know where they are in terms of these areas. They always start in, fleets start in Plymouth, Falmouth, then they go to Galicia, Figueira, the Foz, Cape St. Vincent, and then they reach the Bay of Cadiz. Now, if they reach the Bay of Cadiz, it can be in either turns two, three, or four. If, they ha if it hasn't reached the Bay of Cadiz by turn four, autom they automatically reach the Bay of Cadiz, and then they enter the map through any of these entry areas, north, center, and south. And that's determined randomly. And then they move also, uh, depending on the roll of the die. You see here, for example, here would move one to six automatically, they would move, the fleet would move into zone H. But in other instances, you roll a die, for example, here, and you either on a four to six, if you were in zone G, you move here, but on a two or a three, you move to zone F. So it's gonna be a random movement of the AI, which is the Anglo-Dutch fleet. 
and then the Anglo-Dutch fleet has to try to reach one of these spaces that touches upon these landing zones. And if the Anglo-Dutch fleet has a uh, the minimum strength uh, to land forces, then it will land uh, a detachment. And the strength that it has to have, whoops, the strength that the Anglo-Dutch fleet has to have depends on the difficulty level of the game that we select. There's three levels of difficulty. We have here the table. See, there's easy, medium, and hard. And if we select, uh, for example, medium, at the beginning of the game, we can select one fort fortification point or a Spanish resource. And then the Anglo Allied fleet that uh, to land the detachment has to have a strength of two, the fleet. And then we have to survive nine turns in the tactical map, which I haven't shown you yet. This is the operational or Bay of Cadiz map. After the Anglo allies land a fleet in any of these three landing zones, then the game passes to the tactical stage where you have a, a, a blown up map of Cadiz here. And you have the three landing areas you have there. Puerta del Mar is one of them. And then further to the south you have Playa de Santa Maria. And you also have here uh, El Puntal. And then the Anglo Allied detachment, which is this piece, will be moving up these spaces. But again, these spaces, the route that it'll take depends on the die roll. So for example, if the die roll is a six, it'll move into this space. But if the die roll is, for example, a four, it'll move into this space. And we have our detachment that will try to stop the Anglo-Allied detachment. And we can fight, we can battle, we can combat, attack the Anglo-Allied detachment. There's land combat. And we can place barricades to try to cancel one of their moves. But if the Anglo-Allied detachment reaches the center space of Cadiz before the turns indicated by the difficulty level, then we lose the game. In, in the medium setting, we have to survive nine turns on the tactical map. So we start the game by finishing the setup, completing the setup. We place the, the turn marker in the zero box here of the track. And morale is important. There's various ways of losing the game. If morale drops to zero, we lose the game. If the Anglo Allied detachment captures Cadiz in the tactical map, we lose the game. If the Anglo Allies establish a blockade of the whole port of Cadiz, for four, four turns, we also lose the game. Mm -hmm. Now, if we stop the Anglo-Allied fleet from landing in Cadiz for 10 turns, we win the game. So there's a couple of ways of winning and losing the game that we have to be aware of. And uh, there's also a significant number of events in the game that we will look at as we go ahead. So let's, we already selected our difficulty level. So let's, let's go to the, the next step is to finish set, it, finish set up the game. The Spanish have the option, this zone here, they can block this zone, they can sink a bunch of allied ships uh, and not allied ships, old Spanish ships. Historically, they did so. And then they can place this marker there, but at the beginning of the game, it starts unblocked. So that's one option that we have. 
In addition, we have to place our two fleets. We have two fleets which are very weak at the beginning of the game. And we have to place them in any of these sea zones here. There are um, interior sea zones that you see here, that which are D, C, B, and A. If we place the fleet there, it's gonna have a strength of one. I'm gonna place this fleet, which is fleet number one, in this zone here. So it's gonna have a strength of one. And we mark the strengths of our fleets in this display, so that fleet is gonna have a strength of one. The other fleet that we have, we're gonna place it in one of the outer zones. It's gonna be a zone like halfway between the mid entry area and the southern sentry area for entry area for the Allied fleet. This is our fleet number two, we're gonna place it here, but because we placed that fleet in an outer zone, it starts with a strength of zero, so we leave the strength marker there. And having our fleets with a strength of zero is risky because it can lose, it can uh, reduce our morale. So now we place the, uh, our leaders. We have three leaders in the game. One is very special, it's this guy, the Duke of Sido Medina Sidonia. He has two sides, one with an M and a plus one. So if we place him in the center of Cadiz for the whole game, we always have a plus one to morale, which is very good. But the other side here is the, res the resource side, the R. If we place him in Jerez, which is a town outside of Cadiz, he's gonna be helping the effort in bringing resources, and we will have one additional resource per turn, but that's until the, 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 the Allies land in Cadiz. When we go to the tactical stage, we don't get any more resources. We're gonna place them in Jerez here, so we will have always one more resource per turn. So that's now what we have. Now we have to select which allied leaders will be in the game. There's three of them. And uh, they have them here. They are these leaders here. Now of all these leaders, there's only one that has special powers, let's say. Cecil gives them advantages in combat. So what we do is, you don't know if he's gonna be there. We, we place him face down, we select two. And those allied leaders, we, they're gonna be with fleets one and two. They can switch positions, they can move, but we don't know who, the, who they are. In fact, we don't know the strength of the allied fleets until we actually engage them in combat, or there's some other situations where we have to reveal the strength, so. Now we're ready to begin. The first thing we do at the start of the turn is we advance the turn marker to turn one, and then we check for our morale. Morale are based on the fleets. Because we have one fleet with a strength of zero, we lose one morale point if, if both would have a strength of zero, we would lose three morale points. So now our morale goes down to 24. Remember, if it goes down to zero, we lose the game. The next step is to check the effect of the 30 years war, but in, as a special rule in the first turn of this game, that phase is skipped. So we go to the next step, which is the turn weather and weather can be our friend or our enemy uh, because the weather can stop uh, the Allied fleet, but it can also cause attrition points on our fleet. So we roll a die to see what the weather for the turn will be. Okay, and it's a six, and that is cloudy weather. So I made some, I made cards for this game, but these are like reference cards. These don't come with the game. 
but they're like reminder cards. Now, cloudy weather has no effect on the game. Fleets don't suffer any attrition due to weather, so no effect on weather for that, on that respect. Next, we go to try to detect the Allied fleet. Now, the fleet starts, the Allied fleet always starts the game here in Plymouth. And we have to try to detect the fleet. And for that, there is a table. And there are certain modifiers. Now, at the beginning of the game, we selected a difficulty of medium. And that can give us one, dif one fort or one resource. And I forgot to uh, take the resource. I'm going to have this reserve resource point. Now we go to the uh, detection phase. And here's the detection table. We have to roll a die. We're in the first turn. We have to roll a six or more modified die roll. And if we roll a six or more, then we detect the fleet. But if we don't detect the fleet, we fail. We lose one morale point. Now, this is the modifier I was talking about. We get a plus one to the die roll if before rolling we spend that reserve point. And that is the reserve point that we spent, which was this point. This is the reserve point. So now we don't have any more reserve points until the resource phase where we add some resources. Now we roll a die and we get a plus one. Let's see what happens. Roll is a four modified to a five, so that fails. We needed a six or more. And because that fails, now morale drops by one, so morale drops to 23. And now we go to the resource phase, and we haven't detected the Allied fleet. The resources are tied to whether the fleet was detected. It hasn't been detected, so we receive two resources. The Allied player doesn't receive anything. They're not in the, at Cadiz Bay yet. So now we select which resources we want to receive. Now we have a fleet with a strength of zero, so we're going to take one naval strength resource and another reserve res resource so in the next turn we can roll again for detection and have that bonus. Now we can spend resources right now. We're going to spend the fleet strength resource so that now we can we'll increase the strength of our at the fleet that is in the outer area by one. Okay, I forgot to I forgot to place the two Spanish leaders at the beginning of the game. We can place them with the fleet, so I'll place one with the fleet and the other one with the fleet also. I forgot to do that so now. Having leaders with the fleets also allows the um, to mitigate attrition points. Okay, so we just um, gave that strength point to, uh, to the fleet, one of the fleets, and you can always keep one resource point for the next turn, so I'm gonna keep that uh, resource point, that reserve point for the next turn so we can roll to see if we get a, a modifier that will give us, uh, that will allow us to detect the Allied fleet. So now, we just detected the fleet. We go to the operational stage. Some of the phases apply. And, I, and I'm following this sequence of play card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be following the phases here, the advance, and the other phases that don't have an asterisk. Once the Allied fleet arrives at the Bay of Cadiz, then you do the ones with the asterisk. So now we have Allied fleet advance, but the fleet wasn't detected, so there's no effect. Spanish leader movement. Now we could move if we wanted. Our leaders, see them here, they're with the fleets. They could move into the center city of Cadiz, but we're not gonna move them. So we skip that. Now the next step is uh, establish blockaded zone. That is this particular zone here we can sink all these old Spanish ships and block that zone, we will do so. So we will flip, flip this marker to its block side. So that means that none of our ships know any of the Allied ships can enter this sea zone. So I figure it's less to defend, so it's easier to defend. 
So the next step here is you got to uh, check for landing, no naval movement. Now we could move our fleets if we wanted to. Now moving a fleet, normally you would lose one attrition point, you would lose a strength point. But if you have a leader, you can cancel that attrition point. So we could move our fleet, but I would, uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna move the fleet that is in area A to an adjacent zone. Now that will cause an attrition point, but because we have a leader during the attrition phase, he can cancel that point. I'm gonna leave the other fleet in zone H because it is in, in the middle of the path of, of fleets coming in from the sector, uh, the central and southern sector. So. Next is um, we move, there's no combat, no bombardment, fleet attrition. So now we would uh, lose strength because one of our fleets moved, which was the inner fleet, which is uh, fleet, number one, fleet number one. So normally we would lose one point, but because we have the leader, he cancels that point. So no problem there. Both of our fleets have uh, strength of one. They don't lose any more strength. And now we have Spanish repairs we can spend the remainder of our resources. If we want, we won't. And we can always reserve one resource for the next turn. We will reserve this resource for the next turn. So we just finished the first turn. We have not detected the Allied fleet. Now, detecting the Allied fleet is important because we received double the number of resources for it. And because we, at the beginning of the game, we placed the Duke of Medina Sidonia, which has a resource bonus in Jerez, we would get five resource points, but we haven't detected the fleet yet. So now we move to the second turn. And now we check our fleets to see if they're in zero and morale goes down. They're not, so morale is not decreased. It's still at 23. And now our next step is the effect of the 30 years war. That's particular, we have events which are good or bad for us. Uh, 30 years war events. So let's roll on the 30 years war, war table, see what happens. Roll is a three good news from the war in Flanders. So we have this event here. Good news from the war in Flanders, the Spanish gains, Spanish player gains two morale points. That comes in handy because that's what we had lost before. And you see here, the morale marker is at 23, so now it's at its maximum of 25, so that comes in handy. It could have been a negative event, but that's a good event now. We go to the turn weather table. And we had cloudy weather last time. Cloudy weather is the best weather, nothing happens. Intense storms is gonna demolish, it's gonna really have a demolishing effect on our fleet, so. And the anglo Allied fleets, but they're not on the map yet. So what we have is intense storms, intense wind and rain. So let's take a look at that particular weather effect. Here we have it. Intense rain and wind. You apply a minus one modifier to all naval combats this turn. It's probably not going to be any because the Anglo allies have not arrived. And every fleet suffers one point of attrition. So we have to take that into account during the attrition phase. So let's, what I usually do with these cards is that I place them to the side of the map here as a reminder of the effects. So during the attrition phase, we're gonna have that particular effect going on. The next step now is uh, 
detection of the Allied fleet, okay? So now, we roll again on the detection table here. And we have that point, that resource point that we had, we're gonna spend it now, so we don't have any more resource points. That gives us a plus one die roll modifier. But now we're in turn two, we need five or more. We get a plus one, so it's really a 50-50 chance to detect the fleet. We rolled a four, modified to a five. We detect the fleet, so now we're in turn two. We take the turn marker and we flip it to its invasion detected side. So the fleet has been detected. And now we have a detection and location table to see where the fleet is. Because we knew it sailed from Plymouth. We're in turn two. There's a chance it arrives in Cadiz this, this very turn, very same turn, which is bad. But it can be anywhere between Falmouth and Cape St. Vincent. So we want one die to see where the fleet arrives. And the roll is a two, the best result we could have. It's in Falmouth. So Falmouth, if we take a look at the map here, I'll try to avoid the glare. This is the second space. And this marker will be moving during the turn, during the Allied fleet advance space but it's still like four spaces away from Cadiz. So that gives us time to prepare our defenses. So that's a pretty good result. So the next thing is resources. Now, resources depend on detection. The fleet has been detected. So we receive four resource points and plus one because the Duke of Medina Sidonia is in Jerez. So now we receive five resource points. So let's go to the resource table here. So the weather, we know our fleets are gonna suffer attrition of one point, but the leaders mitigate that. So it's not gonna go down. Now we can keep on beefing up our fleets because we, you can choose a strategy of trying to stop the Anglo-Allied fleet at sea. It's very difficult because they're always gonna have one fleet that's gonna be very strong. Now, to, to build our defenses, this resource builds the defenses in the bay. The defenses in the bay are these defenses, not these, these are the defenses of Cadiz. They can fire into sea zones, but the defenses in the bay are these that you see here. Sancti Petri, can fire at an Anglo-Allied fleet that enters through the south. I, I, I really like to build that one. You have another one here, Santa Matagorda, but that will fire into this zone D. I mean, it, it'll take a while for the Anglo-Allied fleet to reach here. And then we have Santa, Santa Catalina can fire into zone A. So those Defenses are nice, but they're not critical. The most critical defenses are these that are with the orange border because they not only fire at areas that you see here against the fleet, but later during the game, they'll fire at the Allied detachment. For example, here you have Santa Catalina. If it if it is one in one of the it's. Uh, zones there that were the same shape. And this is a, a game that uh, the graphic artist is Niels Johansson. You know him from Lanzarath Ridge, uh, from uh, Maori Wars, from uh, Legion War Games. He also did a map there. And he came up with this idea of the, f the field of fire of each of the fort in the same uh, shape of the fort. You see here San Felipe, the fields of fire for San Felipe are these four. And if we go further to the south, you have El Puntal and fire here. Now the, the other areas have squares. Those you have to stop them with a detachment or you can place uh, 
block, uh, how do you say, uh, you can place uh, barricades, but that's in the tactical phase. So we just detected the fleet, and we have our four resources, so let's build, let's take two for Cadiz defenses, we can, the most we can allocate is two, and one for our fleet. No, let me see. Yeah, one for the fleet. We're going to spend the fleet to beef up one of our fleets. I'm going to take fleet number one. It's going to have now a strength of two. And we take the two Cadiz defense points. And we can always construct only one level of fortification per turn. For example, take if we take... Uh, see here the Catalina take one of these forts here for example Santa Catalina right which is this fort here well that's San Sebastian let me let me get San Sebastian I think it's this one I can barely read it San Sebastian yeah so we're gonna build one level of fortification for San Sebastian it's always on the reduced side. So we place that here. In the next turn, we can spend another fortification uh, point and build it the full strength. The difference between full and, and half strength is on a roll of six, it'll hit an allied fleet here while it's in its reduced strength, level one. When it's at full strength with fives and sixes, it will hit the allied fleet. Now, the other one we want to construct is San Felipe, just in case the fleets take a northerly course. And, we're, of course, it starts again at half. So we spent our two defense of Cadiz points there. Now we're going to spend our two repair points to build up the fortifications in the bay. So one, the one that I like to build is Sancti Petri, which is this one here. See if it'll focus. This is Santa Catalina. There it goes, Sancti Pietri. Petri. Place it there, just in case that fleet enters, even in next turn. Then we have one, another, any, another of the out, outer fleets, Matagorda. No, we'll take the other one, which is... This one is... Let me see if I can handle this here. Actually, El Puntal is, is, is a Cadiz defense. Santa Catalina. So Santa Catalina is up here. We'll place it there in its reduced side. So we built our fortress, uh, uh, fortresses with resource points. So we go to the next stage, which we have it here. Now the Allied fleet is not in the Bay of Cadiz yet. Allied fleet advance, it's been detected. Now it advances one space. So now the fleet, the Anglo Allied fleet advances from Falmouth to Galicia. So they're, they're approaching the Bay of Cadiz. The next thing we do here is Spanish leader movement, but we're not going to move our leaders. They're going to stay where they are. None of these apply. We already established the blockaded zone. Spanish spies. We can spend a reserve point, which we don't have, for an extra detection role, which we don't need because we detected the fleet, or reveal allied leaders. <laughs> we can consider that when the allied fleet has arrived because the leaders are unrevealed. Check for landing doesn't apply. The fleet is not here. Naval movement. Now, we may want to move our fleet up here to try to get into contact with the Anglo-Allied fleet in case it enters here. Uh, right now, if we see that area. If the Anglo-Allied fleet enters F, nobody's going to fire on it. 
And uh, so we can move our fleet there and the attrition will not reduce. Well, yes, the attrition, we will suffer one point of attrition and the weather is intense rain and storm. So our leader can only cancel one point. So we're not gonna move any of our fleets because otherwise we're gonna lose another strength point because our leader can only cancel one point. So there's no allied, uh, there's no naval movement, no naval combat, no naval bombardment. We go to fleet attrition. And now is when we take into consideration the movement and the weather. Now, uh, we, the weather is intense rain and storm, so each fleet suffers one point of attrition, but because they have a leader, that is canceled. So our fleets don't suffer any, any loss, any attrition loss there. And repairs, we don't have any more resources to spend. So now we go to turn three. Turn three. We check our fleets for morale. They have a strength of one and two, so morale is not reduced because of that. The next step is the effects of the 30 years war. So now we roll on the 30 years war table here. The role is a two Berber Corsairs attack. So we have here the card. We roll 1d6 and we lose a morale point equal to half rounded up the die result. Well, let's do that. So this is a negative event. Half rounded up. We lose two morale points. From here, and morale goes down to 23. It's important to keep morale as high as you can because during the tactical phase, we lose a lot of morale each time we fight, we retreat, things like that. So that was a 30 years war effect. Now we have the turn weather effect. And uh, now we roll a die to see the turn weather. The roll is a three, intense rain and wind. So we have the same weather again. Intense rain and wind. So, naval combat, so minus one, and each fleet suffers a point of attrition. I'll put it at, on the side as a reminder. So our next step is to detection, but it's been detected, the Allied fleet resources and we receive five points of resources okay. the allied fleet doesn't receive any resources yet because it hasn't arrived at the bay of cadiz and look at what it receives when it does six so uh we, got, we have to beef up as much as we can we receive our four points plus one because the duke of medina sidonia is in jerez so what we do is, let's see, what are we going to choose? We want to finish building up those fortresses. So we'll pick two defense of Cadiz fortresses, uh, fortress points, two repair points, and again, another naval fleet strength point. We're going to spend the naval fleet strength point to increase the strength of our fleet number two to two. And now we're gonna spend the repair points for the bay fortresses. We have here the fortress of Sancti Petri. Now is at full strength. And then we have our other fortress, San, Santa Catalina, I think it is. Here is also at full strength. And now we're gonna spend our two defense of Cadiz strength point, uh, resource points. And we'll complete our two uh, Cadiz fortresses. We have this fortress here, San Sebastián is at full strength, and San Felipe also is at full strength. And we don't have any more resources. So next we go to the operational phase here. 
starting again with, with the Allied fleet advance. So Allied, the Allied fleet now advances to Figueira de Foz. The good thing about detecting it is you know where, where, when it's going to arrive at Cadiz. We're not going to move Spanish leaders. Uh, established blockaded zone, we did that already. We're not going to use Spanish spies because we already detected the fleet. There's no Allied leaders. No check for landing because the Allied fleet is not here. Naval movement, I don't want to move our fleets again because we will have to then... Uh, burn, lose one strength. So they're, they're staying there. They need good weather for me to move there. No naval combat bombardment. Again, fleet attrition. And the fleet attrition here is, uh, is by the weather. Normally we reduce by one, but because we have leaders, it mitigates one point of attrition. So uh, there's no fleet attrition. We have uh, Spanish repairs. There's, there's no more points, resource points. That's the end of that turn. Now we go to turn four. If, by, by special rule, if the anglo Allied fleet has not arrived by turn four, it arrives automatically this turn. Okay, so we begin by uh, checking our uh, the, the strength of our fleets, none is at zero, so we don't lose any morale points. Next is the effect of the 30 Years' War. I'm going to die here for the 30 Years' War. This time is a one. Bad weather in the Bay of Cadiz. Plus one die roll modified to the turn weather. So that's going to affect bad weather that it's a minus one actually it says a plus one there it's a B minus one minus one so it's a big chance now that we're gonna have uh, the worst weather possible in 10 storms so I'm gonna put this card here and now we go to the turn weather determination phase and we roll for the weather so one, minus one, intense storm. So that is the worst weather in the game. So let's look at the intense storm weather here. It's uh, naval movement is allowed, no naval combat, no allied landing in Cadiz, that is good. So. But look at this, every fleet suffers two points of attrition. So that means during the attrition phase, we will be losing two points of attrition. Our leaders can only mitigate one. So it's a good idea we beefed up the strength of our fleets to two because they're gonna go down to one. So that was the weather. And now we go to the operational phase again. Now, the fleet has arrived. So there's a bunch of effects when the anglo Allied fleet arrives in Cadiz, and we're gonna apply those here. First, we've placed the three Allied fleet counters, which are these. These are the three anglo Allied fleet counters. Place them here. And we have to shuffle them because we don't we won't know the strengths of them until we encounter them in combat or are there, are there any other special condition. So we've done that. The next step is, as it states here, we have to roll 1d6 for each of them and then we place the fleets on a one or two. It's the northern entry space, three or four central. Five and six, it's the southern. So this fleet, whatever it is, we're gonna roll for it. And it enters in the central zone here. It's a good thing we have our fleet number two here nearby, and we already built this fort there. Now we have the next fleet, 
We're going to roll for it. It enters the one or two. It's the northern entry spot. And then the bottom fleet, which is this one, it's also the central spot. So we've got two fleets entering from the center, no fleets from the south. Okay, we've rolled there. Now we mix the two liters and we place them. Yeah, we've done that already. I did that at the beginning. See, the two liters are face down. We don't know who the leaders are. We don't know the strengths of the fleet because during the resource phase, they, are, they, they get strengths now. We actually give them strengths now. The allies have six strength points. Okay. But let's see what kind of, of resources they have. There's a table that we roll on the table to determine what kind of, uh, of strength uh, resources they have. They can be naval strength points. These are supply strength points. Attack on Kadi strength point and reserve strength point. So let's roll to see which kind of strength points they have. And that's another table here. Let's see if I can find it. That is. I can't find it. I know it's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Allied resource distribution table. Here we go. So they, the Allies receive six. We roll to see what's going to be first priority, second, and third. And we go, this will be the first uh, resource, second, third, fourth, five, fifth, and sixth. So let's roll. And the roll is a one. So it's going to be... One is naval strength, two supply, three reserve. Again, naval strength, supply, and reserve. It's going to be two naval strength, two supplies, and two reserves. And we mark that here. Two naval strengths, two supplies, and two reserves. So it's two of each. There you go. And we spend the, the naval strength immediately. We spend two, and those two points are given to the strongest Allied fleet. Now, the rule book says that the Spanish player can choose which of the fleets we want to give them to. So I could choose a, a one, two, or three. So these two can have a potential strength of four. So I'm going to choose this one, two. But re remember, that's fleet three. But the fleets right now are face down on the Cadiz map. So I don't know. I don't know if this is one, two, or three. I don't know. All I know is that fleet three, which doesn't have a leader for now, has a strength of two. So that fleet could, in theory, if it arrives at any of these landing zones, it could land because of the difficulty level we chose, which a fleet of two can land. So, and I think that's an elegant way that the game uses the other fleets kind of like decoys, especially when the other fleets have some strength. You don't know where the strongest fleet is until it is revealed. So we've placed the fleets in their starting positions. And now we go through the operational phase here. Now we have to roll for turn events. There's, there's a random, there's turn events also in the game, in addition to 30-year uh, war events. So you here see the turn event table. And of course, they're good or bad. So here we go. Turn event. It is a four, Spanish Naval Initiative. So in this game, the Anglo allies always have the initiative, which gives them some benefits. But by exception, by turn event, 
We have the initiative. Whoops. So I'll, I'll replace this card as a reminder. The initiative is important. If we would have the fleets on both sides on the board, then the player with the initiative would have an advantage. I think he could either move his fleet or allow the other fleet to move first and react. So we have the initiative because of the turn event. So that's that particular event. Allied fleet advance, it's been detected. Advance, well, the, okay, the, the fleet has arrived already because it is turn four. So we skip this advance phase. Spanish leader movement. We're going to leave the Spanish leaders with the fleets. Allied leader movement. Now we roll a die. And from a five or six, and they move from left to right. So we have here the two leaders who we don't know who they are. We don't know if Cecil is one of those. Cecil gives them advantages at sea and in land. Five or six, so now they move. And the way they move is now the... We had we we want we gave the strength to this fleet because it didn't have a leader. Now it has a leader. In the next turn, roll the five. In the next turn, if they roll another five or six, then this uh, this leader will come to one, and this leader will come to uh, three. But for now, that fleet has a leader. So we go to the next uh, step. which is, um, we move the, the naval, the leaders. Naval blockade of Cadiz, we check for blockade. Now, for a blockade, there has to be uh, requirements. If, if a blockade is established, we flip this marker, and then if it is for four turns in a row, a blockade effective, we lose the game. But for a blockade to exist, to be able to exist, it's not easy. Each of the three allied fleets has to have a strength of two or more, which, I mean, it's only one fleet with a strength of two, or at least two allied fleets must have a strength of two also. So it's either all three with a strength of two or more or two. So there's no, no naval blockade of Cadiz. So we just... Uh, check for blockade, uh, naval, where's the blockade here, no naval blockade, Spanish spies, we don't have any Spanish resource to, oh, I, I forgot to, no, we spent our resources, we don't have any, so we skipped that also. Check for landing. The Allied fleets are not in landing zones. Naval movement. So now, the Allied fleets can move. We have the initiative. We can move first if we want. So I can have this fleet move here. We are, we're, this fleet is already in this sea zone, so I'm not going to move our fleet. If I move our fleet, we're going to have one point of attrition. Now it's the Allies' turn to move fleets. And the way the fleets move is in order one, two, or three. Now for that, you have to flip and reveal them. So we have to find, let's flip the fleets. We have uh, at the center, fleet two. Fleet three, so we got two and three, and one is gonna be this fleet up here. Now, one doesn't have a leader, so there's no chance it will be moving two zones in one turn. When it has a leader, it may. So now that fleet has a strength of zero, but it still, it still moves. So we roll a die. One to five, it'll move here. And uh, a six, it'll move into zone F. So let's roll. So it's a one, so it moves here. 
Um, I'm, no, I can't. I'm live streaming. <laughs> it's okay. But thanks. Thanks for the invitation. Okay, so here we go. So I'm coming here, and this moves here to zone G now. We have a fleet in zone G. We can choose to engage in combat, but this fleet has a strength of zero, so it can't even land, so we, we won't engage that fleet in combat. So that fleet moved, but it can't move again because it doesn't have a leader. Now these two have a leader. So let's roll for fleet two. But you see here it says one to six, they are gonna move automatically into zone H. Now fleet two, this is fleet two has a strength of zero, but it has a leader, it may move again. And to determine that we roll a die on a five or six, it continues moving. They roll a three, so it stays there. Now the other fleet, this is the fleet that has strength and actually the potential to land. One to six, as you see here, it moves here. And we have the option of engaging it in combat, which we will, but there's not gonna be any combat. You know why? Because naval movement is allowed, but no naval combat. So there's no naval combat, but the good thing is there's no allied landing also because of intense storms. So they just stay there, but there's the potential because that fleet, no, that fleet doesn't have a leader. It stays there. No, that fleet does have a leader. I have to roll again and on a five or six, it moves here. And on a one to four, it moves up here. So let's see. First, we have to roll five or six and it'll move a second space. Roll is a two, so it stays there. No extra movement. So that is the allied movement phase. Now naval combat, at least one fleet per side and the Spanish player decides, but we, we can't have naval combat even if I want it because of the weather, intense storm. Naval bombardment, there is at least one allied fleet, but there's no, no form of naval combat is allowed, not even naval bombardment. So now we have allied city assault. There's no city assault because no fleet with a strength of one is adjacent to one of these cities in the coast here. For example, here, none. Cadiz it doesn't apply because it has to be one of the other cities in the bay. So that doesn't apply either. Fleet attrition, yes. Always check for the Allied fleet first. Okay. So the Allied fleets have a leader. We check for the first Allied fleet. Allied fleet number one doesn't have a leader because of the weather. Because of the weather, it suffers two points of attrition, but that fleet doesn't have any strength anyway, so it remains at zero. Fleet two doesn't have any strength, so it remains at zero. Fleet three does have strength, so it will lose two points of attrition. But because there is a leader, and we don't have to reveal that leader yet, that absorbs one point of attrition. So fleet three only, is it three or two? Fleet three only suffers one point of attrition. So now fleet three has a strength of one. So that's, now we check for our attrition level. None of our fleets moved. Uh, and we suffered two points of attrition because of weather. Our leaders can only absorb one. So both of our fleets now have a strength of one because of the weather. So that is fleet attrition. We go to Spanish repairs, I think is the other one. Nothing else for now. The the Anglo Allies, the Spanish repairs, the, these points here, supply and repair, 
they may be used by the Anglo Allied player in several ways. Repair points. Uh, You see here, supply points reduces the Allied fleet attrition by one. So, yes, they lose, they use one supply point, and that Allied attrition it goes up again to two. The uh, Allied strength point. Oh, so it's I, I did it wrong. I did uh, leaders have no effect on naval attrition for the Allies. It's it's supply, so they, they burn the supply point. They have one left. And uh, I think it doesn't say here, but uh, that fleet ha it has two supply points, so it can burn both supply points. That fleet suffers no attrition, so it's still at two. The other points they have are reserve points. Minus one in naval combat, which is good for the Allies, and it allows recovery of the Allied detachment. That is in the tactical phase. Now we're at the end of this turn, and because the Anglo Allies uh, didn't use these points, they they are lost. They are lost. So they can't save one for later like we do. So that's the end of this turn. Now we go to turn five. If we survive ten turns. They don't land. We win. And te I mean, in theory, that could happen if the weather is the worst weather for all five remaining turns, but that's not going to happen. So we go again to start of the turn. We advance the turn marker. We did. Spanish morale is reduced if it's a strength of zero. Any of our fleets, it's not. And now the effect of the 30 years war. So we roll on the 30 years war table again. Roll 1d10, 1d6 here. Roll is a 2. Berber, Corsair's attack again. We roll 1d6. And we lose that amount of morale points, uh, half of it. Round it up. Oh, we lose 3 morale points. So uh, morale is now three, down to 20. Next is the weather for the turn. So we roll for the weather of the turn, and it is it is a four, gusty. So gusty is not so bad. Gusty is one point of attrition for every fleet that rolls a one. So it's a slim chance. So let's put that card over there with. Uh, I'll put it with the beside the map as a reminder. Spanish detection. We skip that. Now we go to resources. We distribute first the allied resources. So we roll to establish allied resource priority. The roll is a four. It's supplies, reserves, and assault on Cadiz. So it's going to be, because it's six, it's supplies, reserves, and assault on Cadiz. No strength. So their fleet uh, is not going to have additional strength. It remains with a strength of three, which is the maximum strength for that fleet, well, fleet number three. So now we roll, no, we don't roll for Spanish resources. We have four plus one for the Duke of Medina Sidonia. So we're going to increase the strengths of our fleets by two. And uh, going to have one point here, so we have two, three, and let's we have a fleet in the north there, north of Cadiz. Let's construct uh, two defense points. So we have our five points. So we, we first, now we, we spend our points, uh, two for the fleets. We take, we're going to beef each of our fleets by one point. And the two Cadiz defense points, we're gonna 
gonna build the fort of El Puntal here. We, you can only build one point per turn, so it's at reduced level. And then we have the it's Matagorda, no? Which one is the one that's missing? Santa Catalina, also, which is the other one which could fire here. But it's gonna have one point there. We may be able to fire at that fleet. Okay. But it's gusty winds. So now the reserve point, we can use reserve points also, I think, for combat. So that's why minus one in naval combat. That's why I, I got a reserve point. So I'm going to save it for possible naval combat. So we did resources. The next step is after resources, turn event. So now we roll on the turn event table. Place turn event table here. And we roll 1d6 here. So six, increase Spanish fleet effectiveness. We apply a plus one die roll in combat, if we have combat. So this is probably a good turn to attack. Increase Spanish effectiveness. So let's uh, locate that. here. So it's a plus one to naval combat here, if there's naval combat. And we, we should look for naval combat this turn with this card. So I'm going to place it here as a reminder. That was the turn event. And the next event here, Allied Freedom, no. Spanish leader movement, no. Allied leader movement, yes. Now we may have a switch of leaders in the fleets, but that's only with a five or a six. Oh, the roll is a five or a, and a six. So this fleet now, fleet one has a leader and fleet three. Okay. Okay. So allied leader, naval blockade of Cadiz. Fleets, just one fleet with a strength of two, no blockade. Spanish spies, we have a reserve reserve point. We don't want to burn it for that. Naval movement, we could move and attack that fleet. The one that has a strength of three. Our fleet has a strength of two, but we have a leader. I mean, our fleets are not going to get a, a lot stronger. We may do that. We have gusty winds. Okay, so we we actually don't have to move. We're in the same sea zone. So I won't move this fleet. And we could move the other fleet. It's in the same sea zone as the zero strength fleet. Now moving the fleet will cause a point of attrition. So we'll leave that fleet there. We won't move our fleets. But we have no naval movement, actually. The Allies move their fleets first. So before we decide that, let's backtrack. Fleet number one rolls to see if it'll move. This is zone four. So you see here, two through six, it moves into zone A. That fleet has a strength of zero. So. We won't even fire on it. Now fleet two is the one, this one has a strength of zero also. And uh, now we roll to see where it moves. The roll is a three. So with a three, five or six it would be south. Fleet two moves the three into zone G here. Fleet two doesn't have any strength, so we're not gonna fire that fleet. There's no effect in firing on it. 
Now the fleet that has strength now rolls, so it will be moving, won't be landing in that zone. And the roll is a two, so it also moves into G here. That fleet has a strength, so we may be firing on it with our forts. We're, we're not gonna move, or do we wanna get our, yeah. Well, we have a fleet with a strength of two and a leader there, so let's leave it there. We go to naval bombardment. If at least one allied fleet is in a maritime zone with a fortification, one to six, the fortification hits if it's at full strength. Five or six with reduced strength. So we see this fleet here, which is the one that has strength. This one is three, right? Three, I'm gonna put it on top here. Just is in that C zone there, G. We have Santa Catalina, touches upon G. And we have San Felipe also. So both can fire. So we fire, they're at full strength. With five and six, they'll cause a hit on the, on the fleet. Santa Catalina rolled a four, so, no, Santa Catalina is actually with a six it hits because that's reduced strength. San Felipe is at full strength. San Felipe has a chance of, uh, of hitting. And San Felipe hits fleet three. So by hitting the fleet, it reduces its strength by one. So that fleet now has a strength of two. Okay. And that is, is there, there's no other fort that can reach it. We did naval bombardment, allied city assault. If at least one allied fleet with a strength of one is in a maritime zone with a city, except Cadiz. Well, this fleet has a strength of zero. Otherwise, we could attack this city here. So uh, nothing happens. Fleet attrition, check for allied fleet first. Well, the weather, we roll for weather first. The weather attrition on a one fleet gets one point of attrition. So be this fleet. A three, no, no attrition. The other fleets I won't even roll because their strength is zero. Our fleets suffer one point of attrition only if they roll a one. Assuming they roll a one because both have a, a leader, and they didn't move, uh, they, they remain with the same level of strength. So that's a no effect there. And that's the end of the turn. Spanish resources, we're gonna keep our resource for the next turn, in case there's, out, there's naval combat. Now we move on to the next turn here, turn six. We don't lose any morale because the strength of our fleets is not zero. Next step, next step here is um, effect of the 30 years war. Let's roll here. Table here. Roll is a two. Berber Corsair's attack. We roll 1d6, we lose half morale points rounded up. Three morale points again. We're losing a lot of morale points. One, two, three early on. We're at 17. Now we go for the weather or the turn. It's a six. Clouds, that is no effect. We could have a landing this turn, if that may be possible. Now we go detection, no detection. We go to resources. Oh, I forgot to apply these resources. 
is for attrition. Let me see one thing here. I like fleet attrition by one. Yeah, there was no allied fleet attrition. So that's, that balance is lost. Supplies. Well, supplies are, and reserve points are low. Okay, so now we would roll to see the priority and resources of the allies. Six, that is assault, reserve, and supplies. No fleet, assault on Cadiz, reserve, and supplies. So their fleet is not getting stronger. So th those are the resources. And we have spot five resources. We're gonna strengthen our fleet, two, Three, four, five. Okay. If we spend our two strength uh, resources on our fleets at three repairs, we're going to spend our two points to build uh, Matagorda there. Matagorda is at half strength. And the other fleet is at full, the other fort is full strength, so that's lost. And we keep that, those two reserve points, which we can use in combat and to re-roll, so we're gonna keep them. And the allies, uh, I don't think they spend any more reserve points. They've got supplies to attrition. Okay. We did uh, resources. We got the turn event. The turn event here. Well, that's the weather event. It's not the turn event. It's a three. Increased defensive fortifications. We re receive one repair point or defensive Cadiz point. It'll, it'll be a defensive Cadiz point. I think all, all our defensive Cadiz points are used in fortresses, but we'll take it. That is the turn event. Allied leader movement. So on a five or six, the Allied move their leaders. Now a two, no Allied leader movement. Next thing that happens is um, naval blockade of Cadiz. They only have one fleet with a strength of two, no blockade. Spanish spies, extra detection, or we can reveal a leader. We're gonna spend one for to reveal a leader. So let's see who's the leader of the fleet that has strength. Hope it's not Cecil. And it is Cecil, okay. <laughs> so that's, he, he gives them some special benefits. So we spent our that's Spanish spies. Now we go check for landing. The landing's conditions are met, let's see. We may have a landing, yes. We have fleet three here. Has a strength of two. It is in this C zone here. And this C zone touches. I got the glare there. On Puerta del Mar. So, yes, there is a landing. There is a landing. And the weather is cloudy. So, there is a, tides, a tide effect. We're in turn. 
six. So we take this table. This is one of the more interesting tables in the game. Turns four to six. Hard, right? Okay. The weather is cloudy. It's the best weather to land. This is so you see they're gusty and cloudy. Roll 1d6. On a 1 to 4, the Allied detachment enters at full strength. On a 5 to 6, it's at reduced strength. So let's roll the die. 1 to 4, full strength, 5 or 6. Roll is a 1, so it enters at full strength. So here we have the Allied detachment. And it is landing, you see here, at Puerta del Mar. So we have a landing here at Puerta del Mar. So now we transfer the action to the tactical map. Here's Puerta del Mar. So this detachment, unfortunately, it's at full strength and with the best allied leader, which is CISO. So we, we're going to play CISO on top. We know that. That detachment is at full strength. Now we have the guns of San Felipe. Now we transfer our fortification markers of Cadiz. Notice that we were able to build full strength all three. No, except this one. Santa Catalina is at reduced strength. So Santa Catalina is here. So we transfer that one here. But the most uh, material relevant fort is this one, San Felipe, which is in the area of Puerta del Mar where the landing is. That one is at full strength. So we place that one here. Okay. And the other fort that we have is San Sebastián. It's here. And finally, El Puntal which is at half strength, is here in the lower area. So we place it here, but that was, the, the, there was no landing here. So we have the landing in this area there, here. Now, the amount of resources that we have at the moment remain as such for the rest of the turn. And we don't have a single Spanish leader in the center of the town. So we have a leaderless detachment. That's pretty bad. But we have to place our Spanish detachment. And uh, see, that the, the, the game gives you the option of placing the leaders with the fleets and you would think, well, I'll place them with the fleets and then I'll transfer them during the leader movement phase. But what happened here was that before the leader movement phase, which happens here, we had the, uh, actually in the, we had a uh, check for landing. Where's the, let see, oh, Spanish leader, yeah. I could have moved the Spanish leaders. Yeah, I could have, I wonder I, I didn't. Oh. I like moving, yeah, I could have moved the Spanish leaders. Let's back, let's say I moved the leader because otherwise it's gonna, this is gonna be a, a walk in the park for the Allied fleet. Okay, so, let me see one thing. No, no, no. No, 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 I can't move a leader. This is why. I didn't move the leader, and then in, during naval movement, the Allied fleet moved there. I think I have this wrong. Let me see. No, the, the Allied fleet had already moved there. I could have moved the leader. I'm not, I'm not going to put a leader there, whatever. Just leave it there. 
So uh, there's no naval combat, no naval bombardment, Allied city assault, no fleet attrition. Weather is cloudy, no fleet attrition. Spanish repairs. So we, we had a landing, we go to the tactical phase. So we're here actually. We got the preparation, that's where we are. Tactical actions. Now, tactical actions are performed. One of them is mandatory, which is the Allied Detachment Advance. The other ones, like Spanish Detachment Advance, are optional. Deploy barricades are optional. Bombardment for Cadiz fortifications are optional. And we choose the order. So, first we're going to have the Allied... We have here the Allied Detachment starts here. So it's going to have the Allied Detachment advance is the first thing. So we roll 1d6 and follow the arrows. We could have the bomb. Uh, no. It hasn't entered yet, so we, we can fire when it's in one of these spaces. But it hasn't entered really the map yet. It's in the landing zone. So on a 1 to 3, it enters here. On a 4 to 6, it enters here. So here we go. Okay, one to three, it enters here. Now, because it has Cecil, it may attempt extra movement, five or six, okay? Now, we'll roll to see if it moves again or not. We'll find out. By the way, we're in the, we're, I, I, I placed the, turn marker in the nine box because of the difficulty level. We have to survive nine turns. So we see, yes, it moves again. Roll the six. So now we roll, roll to see in, to which zone it moves. What are the choices? It's here. So on a four to six, it'll take the panoramic route. On a one to three, it's going to get dangerously close to the center. So in our Spanish detachment, Starts always here. Okay, A or B. I should have started it in A. Okay, so our Spanish detachment is, starts there. So now we roll to see where it moves. It rolled a one, so it moves here. Okay, so we just did. Uh, movement there for the uh, the Allied detachment. Now we have deploy barricades, bombardment, or Spanish detachment advance. They're optional. Now, we, we're going to bombard. Well, we can't bombard, you know why? Because this space isn't the same shape as this one. If he would have rolled another result, he would have been here. So we can't bombard. So we have the Spanish detachment here. But look at the way that this is. His next move, a three to six, will put him within range of San Felipe. And a five or six also. So he's taken this route here to the center. So we have chances of firing at him, but just not now because he's not in, a, in one of those spaces. So our Spanish detachment is just going to sit and wait to not give him an open route, what we will do is we have two barricades. We're going to sp spend one here. And what the barricade does is if the Allied detachment moves onto that space, it cancels that move. But remember, with the leader like Cecil, the Allies can try to move it twice per turn. So that's our barricade, how we use it. So of our actions, we took barricade, we're not going to move the Spanish detachment, and we already moved the, uh, the, uh, the Allied detachment. So now, uh, detachment recovery. Well, the Allied detachment is at full strength, so there's no recovery of the Allied detachment. So now we 
effect on Spanish morale. I should have done that first. We roll 1d6 on a 1 or 2, we two, we lose 2 morale points. 3 to 6, we lose 1. And on a 0, we win a morale point. So let's see the roll is a 6, so we win a morale point. So morale is at 18. And now we just finished one of the tactical turns. So we move the tactical turn marker, but now this one is a countdown to turn eight. And we go again. It's just one of four phases. This one moves a lot quicker. Mandatory tactical action. We, we could fire with our cannon first. I'm gonna do that. Because, oh no, we can't fire with the cannons because he's not in range, he's still there. So we're gonna have the Allied Detachment move now. So we roll a die. On a five or six, it moves to this space within range. Three or six, it, mo it moves into the barricade and, and that move is canceled. Now this, I mean, three or six, no. Wait a second. Now there's one or two actually, it moves into the, in, <laughs> the space where our detachment is. Hmm. So we're going to take the other action. I'm going to place a space with our barric uh, barricade there. So I've, I've burned our both barricades there. So he's going to burn a space, a barricade space anyway. Okay, he rolled a five. So he was called to move here, so that barricade is gone. So his move is gone, is lost. But because he has a leader, on a five or six, he'll get an extra move. And the roll is a five, so now he gets an extra move. But he, what, will he move into this barricade or this space there? Well, let's find out. It's a two, he moves into this barricaded space. That move is also canceled. But we have burned our two barricades. We don't have any more barricades. So now we have, we can move our detachment, but our detachment has to be there, otherwise he's gonna walk into the center. Bombardment? No, we can't bombard that space. It's not within the range. We have effect uh, on Spanish morale. So on a six, we gain a point. Anything else, we lose points. A two, we lose two morale points. So now it's down to 16. Now we have the Allied uh, recovery of uh, strength for the Allied Detachment, but the Allied Detachment is at full strength. So it doesn't have to recover any any points. However, let's suppose that it would be reduced, now we would spend a reserve point. And the Allies, they have two reserve points there. So they, 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 they're very well supplied to fight against us. We don't even have a leader. So that's the end of that turn. And uh, there's seven turns to go to win the game. Yes! So we, again, we go here to uh, tactical actions. Which one do we choose first? We don't have barricades. We can only choose to move, which we don't, or have the allied uh, detachment move. That's what we're going to do. It's going to move. No barricades. Okay. On a one or two, we're going to have mandatory combat there. Otherwise, the detachment will take the panoramic route on a three through six, and it rolled a one. It rolled a one. It was a one. So it moves, and we, we're going to have combat. And this is going to be abusive, this combat. <laughs> so let's pull out the land combat table. Now. Pull out the land combat table. So here's the land combat table. So we determine the land combat strength, right? So it's uh, each side detachment has a strength value depending on its state. The Spanish detachment at full strength, it's at four. Okay, so we have four. Ours is at full strength. The Allied Detachment, if it landed at full strength, it's at six. 
So the Allies have a plus two that subtract the Spanish detachment value from the Allied detachment value. Six minus four, two. So we will be rolling on the two column here. But there's a bunch of modifiers. For each Spanish leader in the center city of Spanish, we don't have any. For each Cadiz defense point or resource point used. Okay, the, the Anglo allies will use a detachment point or an attack on Cadiz point here. They'll do it automatically. They'll use one. And uh, actually, they spend both of them. They spend all of them. So that's a plus two. So they, they're at plus, right now they're at plus two. So we're gonna have to spend one to bring it down to plus one. We only have one. So right now we're at plus one, but it, it gets worse. So minus two, uh, minus two, oh no, that was backtrack. We spend our, our defense point. We have a plus one. Pluses are good for us. We still, that, that applies only to the Spanish. We have a plus one, but it's gonna be short-lived. Minus two if Cecil is in the naval force in the landing zone, yes. So we go from a plus one to a, for us to a minus one. And then minus one if the Allied side is using a Cadiz assault point, maximum one or one reserve point, okay. So they can use a Cadiz. So we're at, mi we're at uh, minus one. With that point, we're at minus two, right? So the final modifier is minus two. Okay, just we roll. Uh, we had one Cadiz point. We're at plus one, minus one. We're at minus two. Now we roll a die. And the result is... If the result is an S, a red S, we win. We're in the two. We're in the two table. If it is a blue A, the Allies win. And there's like a tie result there, A slash S. We in that case, if there's a Spanish leader in the center, we win. Otherwise, the Allies win. So there's a minus two. We're going to lose this combat anyway. I'm going to roll the die because of the modifiers, just for ceremonial purposes. That's, that's a modified result of one. The allies win, okay? So the defeated detachment suffers attrition. So we flip the detachment to its reduced side. If it was a Spanish detachment, which is reduced, you reduce morale by four points, but no, it was at full strength. So now uh, the Spanish detachment is reduced. So we do that. And this is going to have an effect on morale. It is reduced. Okay. So if the Allied attachment was already... Okay, no, that doesn't apply. To prevent suffering attrition, the Spanish player will withdraw a leader from the center of Cadiz. We don't have any. We can't prevent that. So the defeated detachment withdraws. We withdraw to the space of the initial zone, A or B, at the Spanish player's choice. So, you know, we have to withdraw to the, to the center of Cadiz, Spain. Okay. I think we have to withdraw here. A or B, it's to A or B. We draw to B here, not to the center city space. And that was Cecil's first move, right? Yep. On a five or six, he moves again. And the funny thing is, if he moves again, he goes into the center of Cadiz, and we lose the game. 
yes, he moves again. And the only movement is into the center of Cadiz, so we just lost the game. We, we couldn't defend Cadiz, and that is the end of the game right there. So it was very pretty early. We didn't have a Spanish leader. It was a mistake to leave them both with the fleet. It's tempting because then the fleets are pretty strong. But uh, and we have uh, Francisco Javier. How are you doing, Francisco? So we just finished uh, a game of, I'm pretty sure I, I probably screwed up some rules, but I wanted to give you an idea. This is a, a solitaire game. I was given by, to the attendees of, uh, of uh, Pax Ludica in Cadiz and designed by Daniel Hernandez Iniesta. It has a lot of replayability, it has a lot of random elements, a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, random elements, random events. And we pursued the strategy of having the Duke of Sidonia at Jerez, so we had plenty of resources, but we lacked uh, a leader in the center. So the Spanish detachment was practically helpless and that's the end of the game. That's all she wrote. So let me get back to this camera here. So I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna have some dinner. We've been at it for an hour and 41 minutes. Uh, I appreciate any of you watching. Uh, I'll be right back and we'll walk the tables and maybe do a couple of interviews in the first day. It was a good day for me. I won not one, but I won two games. I won Waterloo, Solitaire. I don't know where I'm going to fit it in my suitcase. And I won a, a small one. This will fit somewhere. The Iron Curtain, two games. So it was a productive day in terms of sweepstakes. And, uh, well, I want to give you all thanks for watching. And uh, thanks, Francisco Javier, for being there. Just to give you an idea, right now, there's a lot of people having dinner right now. So, tables are pretty empty. If I have a chance, I'll probably play a game tonight. It's always good to play at least, man, one game face-to-face. Uh, -face. So that's all she wrote, and I won't even put a, an outro here. So this is Tuca Joe, thanks Francisco Javier, signing off for now.